Okay. I think the recording will start. So you can see my screen and you can hear my voice. Okay. So um, I will show you um, the demo for um, each test that I described uh, earlier. So here I have um, a sample code um, <clears throat> which uh, we uh, outline similar to uh, this week's challenge with the similar use case. It have some analogies. So what this code do is that it will test um, to the term block. So what this code will do? First, um, I think I have to show you the end product for this code. So you can evaluate um, a user question like who is uh, in academy and um, it will <clears throat> it will give um, a test matrix if if this specific question is have a sufficient context for its um, answer or it's if it have if the LLM is confident about uh, its answer based on the context provided for this specific question so um, this is how it works. So when we come to the code, first we have a um, different set of prompts. Um, we have a context <clears throat> and we have also a gen data generation prompt and we have a generic uh, data uh, evaluation. So first we have this context or you can <clears throat> see this or you can um, look this as a data in a vector database <clears throat> or generally a context for the LLM. So it's about uh, the data is mainly about um, OpenAI and uh, how it's founded by who and other information about uh, OpenAI. So we will use this as an example and also as a context. You can term us this as one context, this as a, another. Um, context and this has another context one you can see it as like this as a chunk one this has chunk two and this has chunk three and this is just a use case and in actual case this will come from the vector data not manually in this text file and we have another uh, actual prompt um, which is a data a test data generation prompt which will generate uh, a test data based on the context we provided to the LLM that I showed you before, the context. So this prompt uh, guides the LLM to respond with um, question and answer that's extracted from the um, context. So in this context, like we have um, we have an instruction for the LLM, like your task is to formulate exactly this amount of number of questions. This is a placeholder or a variable that we will pass from the code. So this amount of uh, your task is to formulate exactly this amount of um, test uh, question and answer from a given context and provide the answer to um, each one in each um, questions each question in each questions with a question mark character and then uh, in any line write the answer to that question using only the context provided in the output must be in a JSON format, like we give the LLM also an example. So the output for this prompt will give us um, like this. It's a JSON format. It will have user uh, and assistant dictionary. So basically user is the question that a user gives and then assistance is the answer that um, the LLM provides. So, um, and also we, uh, each question must start with user, each question must start with assistant. And we also laid out some uh, rules or guidelines for the LLM to um, follow. So the first one is the question should make sense to humans 
given point read without the given context and also the other one might be the answer to the question should not contain any links um do not use um, phrases like provided context it is in the question um the question should not contain more than 10 words just in the life and finally we will have a context variable uh, we will have a context placeholder that we will uh, fit um, from the code or from the context that i showed you before so this is a placeholder that will hold the context so we will pass this whole um, thing to the LLM and the LLM will provide us with a test uh, with a test data or a test this is basically a test data generation based on the given context so the data generation code just to give you an a highlight will um, have a function like get completion which will um, give us the completion or the output of the LLM which in this case, um, basically, uh, we will have a parameter like message, um, a model, like if it's GPT-3 or GPT-4, maximum tokens, um, and the like. We will pass these things to um, the OpenAI uh, completion function, and it will create us uh, the final output for the LLM response. So, um, and it also have a file reader it will read these um, prompts. So these are just a text files. So it will fetch this text file and it will read what's inside in it. Just it's a basic file reader function. And also we'll have, we will have a generate test data generation. So this function will um, uh, accept three things, mainly three things. It will accept prompts, prompt in this, it will accept prompt, uh, context and number of test files prompt in this case is um, uh, prompt in this case is um, no prompt in this case is uh, this one the data generation prompt that i described you um, before and um, the context is uh, like the context about the opening information and the number of test questions that we will input um, as we like. We might want to create a 10 test data set or a five test data set or the like. We will pass just the number in this and this function will generate this amount of number of test data and we will have the API response again. So currently we produce just five um, test data or we can change this like six is the data and we can run so this will produce when we run this data generation file this will produce uh, this will produce the test data that is uh, based on um, this data generation prompt which is basically in this json format and we also instruct the llm like to not uh, um, like the question should not contain more than 10 words or uh, limitation of talk. We instruct her like using many guidelines and also we have to diversify the generated test data so that uh, when we evaluate the final output, we will have an accurate response for the final um, test. So it will uh, do, basically the code will do this uh, or will follow uh, this instruction. So, um, make data so it it's it give it gives us a test data. So we want a six test data. So it gives us six, six dictionary sets with a user assistant or user answer format. So this, like who founded OpenAI, Sam Altman, Elon Musk, and Greg Proffitt. So it, the LLM found this information from the context that I showed you before, like this information. We provide her with this context or with this information. In reality, this came from, like I told you, this came from the vector database. 
search engine so so this is the test data and it found this, all of this information from the context provided to her so also we instruct the daily link to diverse to diversify the equations like it will have a diversified equation in dancer um, mechanism for so that we can evaluate the final generation tests better so these are uh, like you can turn this as uh, an idea uh, word which have a higher accuracy um, answer for the given um, question so basically this is how you generate uh, a test data so what we will do is you will define a well um, crafted prompt for the LLM and you will instruct her using many different instructions and using the completion of the OpenAI, that instruction will be conducted as the um, use case end finally, which will, we will have these uh, different types of uh, diversified um, tests, data sets. So this is uh, basically how you uh, will generate the test data. So finally, what um, we will do is we will use this generation uh, generic evaluation um, prompt so this uh, so this generic evaluation prompt will um, evaluate a, a new user question based on the test data that we provided and based on again the context that we provided to the element so the instruction uh, if i read it like before even answering the question consider whether we have sufficient function in the context to answer the question fully your output should just be the boolean true if you have sufficient information in the context and in the test data by seeing the test data to answer the question in false otherwise the response is just one word the boolean true or false and you must output the word true or the word false and nothing else and we will try this context we will provide her with the context this is a variable or a press holder that we will feed the context to her and also we um, give the user question to her like user question is we provide uh, a variable or a placeholder for um, the LLM. so we will um, the final stages we will run this prompt using the evaluation function so and also just to go to um, to go to the evaluation function this is just a basic evaluation function there are many um, test cases like we um, currently evaluate the user question based on the open AI log probability uh, mechanism it will give us the probability of a new user question against the context and against the test data that we um, generated before. So this this evaluate function will uh, accept the prompt. The prompt we mean by um, this one, generic evaluation, like it will feed the context and it will feed the question and it will give us true if this question is um, contained in this context and it will give us false if uh, this user question is contained inside this um, um, context. So it will uh, have prompts and it will also accept user message, any user message that we test, the test is conducted. We will also pass to her a context like the OpenAI context that I showed you before. And it will also use the test data if we set this to true it will um, include the test data inside this generic evaluation prompt and if we uh, exclude if we exclude or if we put this as false we will not include the test data inside the um, the context so it will also have a completion function and what it will do is um, OpenAI have um, a get completion um, function and one of the parameters that we can pass is a log probability. So we will have to set this log probability to true and 
it will give us the um, the best um, the best accurate answer for the given instruction so how it works is like it will hold the api response in the top log probabilities currently we will have only one you can set this to three or four or five uh, as many cases you like but if you only can set one also it's fine so we will have only one answer that means <clears throat> so this log probability will hold the probability of the llm response against the given instruction which means against the context and against the test data so <clears throat> what it will give us is like a percentage like uh, out of 100 percent how well uh, is this question um, contained in the given context that we provided so it will answer uh, it will answer as true if the system message is true and also if it have a uh, accuracy or a low probability of greater than 90 percent we will say it's it true and also if <clears throat> the output is false and if we have the log probability um, greater than also um, 95% it will uh, say it as false so in this case the system said this true or false uh, came from this point so we need structure like your output should must be the boolean true if you have sufficient information in the context and false if you have not so this true or false came from the LLM response and also this log probability came from or again from this LLM response as a JSON response. So this is how the simple probability test case is conducted. So when we um, run this one, uh, this is in case you're wondering why I use a make file, this is just, I set it like, if I uh, write make data generate, it will run the data generation script. And if I say make data evaluate, it will run the evaluation script. That's why uh, I use make. It's not, it's unnecessary, but it's just a shortcut for um, running file. So we will evaluate a data. That I valid. So, at first, it will um, prompt us to um, give any user question. So, like um, we can write in here, um, like first, let's test inside the context. So, the context is like OpenAI was initially founded in uh, by some Ottoman. So. We can ask uh, who founded OpenAI. Um, who founded Open? So it gives us. It has. A, this is a Boolean value. Has sufficient context for answer. It is true, because this question have an answer inside that specific context, and also its accuracy is like. 99%. The LLM is confident about her answer or the answer she will give in like nearly 100% because this is included inside um, the context. So this question, we can say that this question have an information that's inside uh, the context. You can also test um, using the different question, which is outside um, the context, like um, who uh, found it? Coca Cola company. So this information is not found inside the context. So it should give us a low probability. Yeah. Has sufficient context for answers? It is false. Because there is no information, there is no uh, inclusive information about this question inside that specific context. And the LLM is also confident about her answer, which is false about 100% of the time. She's confident that this is false, 100% um, of the time. So this is um, how you evaluate uh, 
in data against the, a prompt or a context data. So you can use this analogy for your um, current challenge document, like for your project as like the user, you can use as the, the, is the user question, you can change the user question as that you input are a set of prompts that you will select uh, the highest performance from based on your description uh, in the test case in, in the context. So you can use this um, equation as uh, as different kinds of prompt, and you will um, have this matrices or these calculations um, for that specific uh, prompt use case. And it will tell you that based on the description or based on the context that you give to the LLM, it will tell you this prompt has this amount of confidence about um, uh, the instructions that you gave the LLM. Uh, and also, uh, uh, if you input also another or different sets of prompt, it will give you a set of metrics and it will give you um, a set of um, confidence for the LLM to answer that specific prompt, whether it is um, appropriate for the given description or um, not. So this is how you test, uh, how you use this rug test uh, independent. So yeah. if you have any question, you can ask. Yes, Abdullah. So I have a question regarding which component did we actually test in this scenario, like the retrieval or the generation one? In this specific uh, case, we are testing the final output, which is the generation. The retrieval, like uh, I told you before, the retrieval is the main test, and it will test the retrieved or the related chunk documents against the user question. And it will disregard the unrelated chunks, and it will only feed the LLM the relevant chunks that's contained inside the context. So this is not the retrieval test. This is uh, data generation and also somehow similar to the augmentation test that you can conduct. Okay, and one additional question I have is regarding the uh, test output that we first saw, like uh, question and answer format, in the question and answer format, where did we use that output? We can use, you can see my screen, right? Yes. We will use that output, like uh, inside uh, this evaluation um, prompt, like you can use that test case inside this evaluation prompt so that the OpenAI can evaluate it more better because it have the context, it have the user question, and also it have a test data, which is, which we can say that it's an ideal data or it's an accurate or 100% accurate data that is contained inside the context. So she will have a sense of, um, um, a sense of many different, uh, to look into many different uh, diversified question in dancer and she will uh, answer you uh, the best response that's content in the context. So yeah, we can you we will use it inside this evaluation. Plan. But there are many different use cases that you can also use it for different kinds of purposes. But in this case, we only use it to fed LLM to diversify or to to, to diversify the LLM's knowledge to give uh, to get the best response from the chatbot. Okay, so the context that we are passing for this generation of test cases, is it going to be the entire vector store? No, 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 this is just a sample um, data. Like, in reality, it will be um, when someone asks a question, the vector database, for example, if you use a VBS vector database, <clears throat> it will search for the semantic search, and that semantic search, that semantic or related to the chunks will come from the vector database, not the whole document, but the related chunks. But the retrieval test will be like it will also filter um, 
it will also filter those chunks um, against the specific user question. So in this case, we only use, you can turn it, uh, you can, uh, can say that this is like a vector store or this is just the context that we fail to eliminate. In reality, this context will come from the vector database. This is just a sample uh, description because that's easy to show you to implement this in this tree. In reality, it came from the vector database. So, uh, uh, like the entire the vector database or part of it? Part of it. The chunk means the portion of the document. We, you will load the whole document inside the vector database. And when you use a search algorithm, and when someone came and asked some specific question, it will look into only the relevant chunks or the relevant portion of the document. So the LLM can have, or she will give a more appropriate answer inside that chunk or that context. So you can term this as, this is a chunk, not a document. This is the chunk. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Abby. Yes. Um, you found it? Yeah, hi, there. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, I think you did a test in devaluation for one context, right? One chunk, or like many chunks for one context, right? Yeah, the open AI context. Yeah, so what if I want to add another context? Like, how do I relate it to yeah. that specific context that I want to rank it with? Like, if, uh, if I give it a prompt and it relates that to that context and it gives me a rank, that's one scenario. But if yeah. I give it more context, uh, how does it reference the source? Like, does it say from context one, the rank is this, and from context two, the rank is that? Uh, how does it do that? Like, how can I make it more dynamic? So, yeah, that's like code implementation. You can implement that by writing many different uh, Python functions. That's not a prompt thing. So, you will have a context one, text one, like in implementation. Like, you will have context one, you will have context two, you will have context three um, files or chunks, and you can. Um, you can relate or you can test um, based on that evaluation. Um, and you can differentiate those um, contexts among themselves. But yeah, in the challenge case, you will have to test the actual prompt. So you can, uh, yeah, maybe you can refer the question. Like, so, like, I have to explicitly state that, like, uh, for example, like, if I give it a user input, mm -hmm. and if I wanted to state to test it for multiple contexts, I, I should say, like, from context one, the rank is this, from context two, the rank is this. And okay, that is, this. yeah, that is, you are talking about the retrieval test that I talked to before. So, in the retrieval test, in the reality or in the actual sense, the retrieval test will be a user might ask some specific question and it will search for a semantic search from the vector database. So the vector database will give you many different things. Like it will give you, like, uh, for example, if the vector database gives you 55 or contact uh, chunks from the vector database and also for many different documents, not only one document, for many different documents, this retrieval is this. Uh, Questions that you asked, uh, like the context or the chunks, you can say the chunk is the context. So we have a 50 um, context or chunks. We can also streamline those uh, chunks on the retrieval test by, um, like, by testing it uh, um, versus the user question in the chunk one. And also, we can test the user question versus chunk two. And we will have a similarity test where this probability or confidence that this specific user question is contained in that context or in that specific chunk, and it will give us, we can um, disregard the low probability chunks, and we can regard the high probability chunks, and we can fit also 
this high probability or this high accuracy chunks to the LLM. So this is how the use case um, scenario is conducted. This is just a sample code, but in reality, that's how it's conducted. Okay. It would be better if, like, if you showed me, you know, in at least you know a couple of contexts, so that I can, you know, see how it how it would be with multiple inputs or multiple multiple chunks. Yeah. Look, okay. I will provide that uh, in the code that I'm building. Okay. Contexts okay. one context, but... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Plus Lael. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. So in the retrieval, uh, as you were finally explaining, I think I missed it while you were present. But uh, so what I get is you do similarities in, uh, from the vector database to get context. And then the vector database might give us 50 chunks. So how do yeah. we now that down to a, a smaller number so that uh, we can feed the LLM? Or do we use the LLM to to also uh, test the retrieval process? So I think I answered it for final, I guess. Um, like the 50 chunks. I, I mean, maybe just, uh, if you just see show the code, I mean, it's simply putting a number there, right? So maybe just in the code, when you select, that is much easier. Right now, I think that, you know, not seeing a screen sometimes might confuse. No. Like if you yeah. go, if you go to your um, code and uh, in that code where actually you okay. reduce the number. Okay. Um, what I have uh, do in here is that I just uh, use a sample context, but in reality, I explain that. But in this uh, scenario. <clears throat> in the retrieval test. So you will have um, a different chunkus, like you can term this as... But I mean, I think the, the question for me, as I understand it, is like, you know, in wave it, for example, when you use just, you have, you said like how many you want, how many chunks you want. Because oh. that's basically simply the question. Okay. I can show you. And then if you increase it, I mean, it's a dark, uh, usually for a screen, doesn't show. If you can make it white, uh, white background will help. Yeah, much more. Usually this is better for presentation. Yeah, so there are right there, right? So yeah. So first, um, but just maybe just that code is already answers uh, Basile's yeah. question. Uh, yes, yeah. you will you will define a schema. That's a, the chunk schema. This chunk schema will hold the transformer document. We will have also a document schema, but that document schema will hold the entire document. But this chunk schema will hold the chunk as well, the partition of those documents, and it will vectorize those partitions again and when someone came and asked or if there is a user question it will look inside this database or this vector chunk schema which holds this um, portion of the document and it will give us for example in this case um, we've yet has a with limit uh, function which we, we we use eight so in this case uh, in this case in this code the there there are eight chunks that will be given by the vector database similar to the user question we will pass the user question with the with the hybrid um, function and this function will basically um, um, uh, conduct a semantic and keyword search from the vector database and it will give eight similar chunks among those vector uh, um, document partitions and it will give us eight chunks so the retrieval test will test these eight chunks again to filter it down. The retrieval test will uh, narrow down these eight chunks to like, like maybe not all the eight chunks might be relevant to that those user questions. 
So this weight we wanted to narrow down those chunks to like, it might give us like two chunks or it might give us like three chunks. And the other um, five chunks may not be relevant to the specific user push. So yeah, to answer your question, this is just uh, so Basile, do you understand? Like it's it, usually the amount, the number of chunks uh, is basically in every. So this is wave it, but whether it's pinecon and other vector database, you can ask it uh, with its own thing just to return only the number. Because normally, it it's like clustering. All of them they do clustering. They say, okay, what is you know how many the distance they compute the distance between your question. And that the, the the chunk, whatever you call it, chunk. And then if you ask it, give me ten of the closest, then it gives you ten. If you say 20, fifty of the closest, it gives you the, the. But one of the closest, it gives you one. So because it's just the the theta between your question or the the angle between your question and the, the chunk is what is determined, and how the closest will be the first one. So it's a nearest neighbor search. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So the number is is really up for grabs. Uh, you, can, you can just yes. put in whatever number you can change. You like exactly would be enough. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Alexander. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think uh, your demo is most similar to our challenge documents, which are in task theory and the, uh, automatic test case generation uh, so in the demo i have not seen the automatic test generation or maybe the problem of me would you show me which part is automatic generation by automatic we mean that the llm will produce to us a set of test data for um, a test case so like I showed you, uh, this is uh, a sample um, user question uh, prompt. So um, in this um, prompt, we will uh, instruct the LLM to formulate exactly this amount of uh, test output or test, uh, yeah, test uh, description output from a given context and provide answer to uh, each one. So it will produce this test uh, user case scenarios uh, which is contained or based on the context that we fed the LLM. So by um, using the data generation function in the opening completion, we will um, produce this amount of test um, data or test use cases for um, our projects. And another, maybe another way to put it is, yeah. I think that the, the terminology there might confuse you test with user test, but it's this one is basically think of it as training, validation, and test data sets. So it's generating test data sets that with a ground truth. Um, and automatic means either using an algorithm or a LLM. If it's LLM, you write a prompt to do that. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I checked about how to do evaluations on RAG systems and I came around with a tool known as RAGAS. Yeah. Is it relevant to this project and would yeah. it be another way of doing things like of what we are seeing now? So that test will do like that is a test that you will conduct um, to test the whole RAG pipeline system. So this test that I showed you will um, show you how you can independently test the retrieval or the data generation um, or the argumentation uh, parts. So that RAGAS test will um, have like you will uh, feed that Ragas module like with uh, a ground truth plus the description of the prompt plus um, the test data 
and it will um, test the accuracy of the generated chatbot response based on the, that ground truth. Um, you can also, um, the ground truth might be a tricky um, title. In our case, we define a ground truth like um, the from the retrieval test that we conducted, we have retrieved the, only the relevant chunks or the relevant documents from the Wavia database. So the summary or the outputs from those related chunks, uh, we use it as like the ground rules in our sense. So we will use that uh, ground truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to add like basically Abdulhamid, that's what we are also asking in the uh, challenge document to use ragas. I mean, when you do task one, a number of the references are about ragas um, and using that for validation. And then the generation and everything is to test, to use it inside the ragas, right? So it is exactly that. So it's not only that whether it's related, but it's exactly what is asked. Like you will use ragas to do the validation. So Ragas gives you the matrix, it computes for you, given the data, it computes for you. Okay, so so we'll be generating the data, like we're, uh, the way we are seeing it now, and then yeah. use that on Ragas. Exactly, and Ragas also has an automatic data generation. You can also see that one as well, but ultimately the data preparation you have to do one way or another. Um, to use Ragas. And I think the other alternate, I mean, Ragas is the main dominant one, uh, and that's what most is used and what we are asking. There are some related, uh, also in the reference, I mentioned one in the kind of the the packages and tools that are, so there is also Foo, I think Prompt Foo, uh, as well as MLflow has evaluation that they introduced, but Ragas is the main, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I think th there might be, so maybe just if you finish some of the, like the tutorial I just joined, but if there are confusions, I wanna make sure, I mean, I think it seems the challenge document might, might have a slightly, um, because we don't provide data, we didn't also provide, I mean, we should provide, we will, I mean, Fakata will give you the generates um, OpenAI key and all that. So I think that there should be, those confusions should be clear, but is everything now clear? What is, you know, it's very easy to understand a RAG system, but sometimes the complexity is in very details. So if you have any questions, something that's not clear, you can ask it, uh, Nasrallah. Hey, Ababa. Morning. Um, it's just Morning. that. Um, it's just that um, now the fact that we're actually doing the research and reading the articles. Do you mind if you just give us in a more in a more comprehensive format? Um, um, what is the challenge exactly? Uh, just just simplify it in that format. Like. Um, maybe on Monday we, we we didn't do some little bit dig digging on the concept and the concept were quite confused. Uh, the fact that now we have enough or enough research about it, just just tell us what is the expectation of this weekly um, uh, submission? Because the way I'm assuming and in the way maybe other of my colleagues are assuming are different. And just to clear out the things and to clear out the stage. I just want to know what exactly what we need to do in a more comprehensive. And I think we could understand what you exactly mean now because we already we are already reading about the topic and so on. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. So I think the um, the real question is first is what is, uh, you know, Rax. Rax is basically, you know, a way to use LLMs in a custom data, right? Basically, it's it's a, the the key component. Sometimes maybe people might miss is that LLMs ultimately they are generating uh, engines. They generate something very crazy stuff, but they they you know very good at at it. But they generate based on what they see, what you prompt them. So the prompt is really a, a word and even a concept in many other in behavioral economics. If I 
talk about water, then you might get thirsty. You, may, you know, the humans do that. The, like if I mention about, oh, like food, I might be prompting you to think to be hungry. If I talk, salespeople do it all the time. They prompt everyone to thinking something, right? So prompts basically are the English version of what a prompt is. It is prompting you to think, influence you to, to, to want something, to do something, right? So that's basically LMs are being prompted to do something. Now, normally, when they are prompted, just like a human, they have a pre-trained concept. Like that is basically the data that they get trained. Ranks are a way because knowing the limitation of uh, LLMs, their training is not everything. It's a way of providing inside that prompt some knowledge to influence not only what you to get what you want, but also to help them use the knowledge, another knowledge that they were not trained about. So it's it's more about like think of it, the context that you give to LLMs being a story you tell them. You know, it's you are prompting them, but you first tell them a story, and then you prompt them, and then now the combination of that allows them to use their knowledge, their skill, their previous skill, which and then your story and the prompts your influence and generate something you want. So ultimately, at the heart of rocks are giving them context to, you know, to build, uh, to generate something. Now, so that's rank, you know, that's, that must be clear. And if that is not clear, nothing will be clear. Okay. So, and that is once that's clear, then we talk about, okay, how can we do that better? Because now that the power of LLMs is just so much, we want to get very accurately what we want. So getting something is almost easy. You can just say some prompt and then they tell you. But getting exactly the what you want, the art of it is the current project. The precision, the word precision there is to get what you want with a bound uncertainty, with bounded uncertainty. That that is slightly different from like just getting from rag something, an answer. You know, Nana has not been optimized, and we are optimizing it. Getting from Nana. It still uses the context, you know, of what we gave, the context that you write, whatever. But sometimes it gets, it has a flow, right? It doesn't answer. It, it is answering when it shouldn't answer. It's not answering when it should answer. So getting what you want is enterprise means in the title there is enterprise grade and precision. And there, those words are intentional. It means it's for you to understand. It's not about getting something. It's getting exactly reliable reliable answer because enterprises can't afford some with a system that sometimes works sometimes it doesn't work so it is about so then the, the second part of the project first is rock second is understanding that enterprise means whenever you see enterprise it means reliability and robustness of the system that you are doing so it is providing in enabling rocks the rug system that basically means just you know uh, a prompted llm to provide something that you want in a reliable and robust way now if that the second component is clear the third component is how to do it and how to do it currently the, the technology is breaking each piece of a rug system retriever argumentation and generation and test them tests each piece that the inputs and outputs of each of these piece and what we want then the whole project is to do that the how part right so the the knowledge part the you know the what part is the first and the second which is what is rug and you know uh and understanding the the need and the requirement for enterprises to be reliable and stuff those are the kind of the, the requirements and needs the third component how to do it is we are asking you the challenge is we are asking you to do it now let me stop there because i say it, a lot is that clear yeah that part is clear uh, so now coming to the how uh, the how for this week is actually so we know rags and i understand the rag bar and 
we we need to use uh, we we have to use rack in a way that we could improve the user input of prompt isn't based on data set so the how part so now the how part is there are different components in rack and the how part is first is we know prompts are at the heart of everything basically everything is prompt so in in some way it's just we decompose that prompt to be sometimes context, sometimes this, sometimes that. But at, at the heart of everything is, you know, prompt. So the automatic prompt generation is if you get a good prompt, if you can design a good prompt, you can solve many things. Therefore, the first component of the, the thing is how to generate, how to know when a prompt is good or not. It is, and therefore, because to know that you have to generate it if you know how what a good prompt is then then you can generate it right and because uh, you know you you don't want to give it to individuals to do the prompt because if you do that then you know that that person must be very good in industrial sense we don't want to believe you know we don't want to let it into these hands we have to have a system a methodology an algorithm that allows us to generate a suitable, a robust prompt. And that's what part of automatic prompt generation. It is to learn the features of a good prompt. And if yeah. we know the features of a good prompt, then we generate it. And therefore we we, we make it independent of an individual. So yeah. the first so, part is, yeah, go on. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, that actually, okay. That's actually is the, the aha moment that I, I would love to ask is that, how do I know, honestly, as, as a not a human brain, but how do I need to make sure that the machine knows that this prompt is right or wrong, or it's it's, it's a great or wrong? And I'm I understand just, we might need to use let me then let me answer exactly that because that's a, the key part of it. And in that key part of why we use the old method, what is because the old method, the mathematics method, is almost always the only method, right? In the, in the statistics and mathematics method and the statistics tells you measure it 100 times and see how much it works and as long as the samples are you know uh varied that means random enough then your method works simple so you generate test data such that and then you and uh, as long as you make sure that the test data is varied enough that means you know random enough it's not biased and it has enough variation then if you use that one on your test prompt and because you have a ground truth and the question and you know then the prompt is the using one prompt gives you 90 percent 95 90 percent accuracy and the other one gives you 80 percent accuracy then of course the one which 90 percent accuracy is good and then you say that prompt strategy not the prompt itself that does prompt strategy can generate prompts with 95 with 90 percent accuracy that's it no more feeling it just becomes a number and that's what normally when we say enterprise means that we have a certain idea how uncertain we we become and usually those are statistics so it's so so the, what, what you're trying to emphasize in here is that and um, as much as you can how you can make it emotionless and be more of a numeric base of generating the prompt and then not be biased because i think the moment you, or the best the best way to decrease a bias is to take out the emotion factor if i'm not mistaken isn't it yeah robust means exactly that it, it should not only about you it's not about the people it should be there has to be a number that tells you how accurate something is and usually the only way we know is generate a data or a label it's called a training or taste or validation data and validate your strategy your algorithm of generating you know type of prompt you know a prompt that's a prompt is it can be a class when it has you know when it's like okay i my class constructs a, a prompt given an input right now i can test the class just a class is like any other model in, in machine learning that if i have you know you know in any type of model then you determine its parameters and then you say like okay these are the strategies to determine the parameters 
and these are the, the, the strategies of my model, you know, the architecture of it. And then I test with it. I, I use a training and I train it and then I get the thing. And then I also have a hidden data that I will test on it. And then I will report the accuracy on the test data. And on the training and validation data, I am going to be tweaking until I get the desired value. So that, you know, use exactly the, the usual way of estimating its uncertainty. And so it, what we are asking is for you to come up with an, a template or a kind of a model for generating a prompt of a certain type. Because and we, if you define it as certain type being when a, a person is has a context and when it, they don't have a context, that's a two type of, for example, you, you can have a, two types of templates. When if the day, if the person has in their requirement that they have a context to give, use this type of prompt. Otherwise, use this type of prompt. And this allows you now the, the strategy of your prompt. And then you generate different type of questions the user might ask you. And then a ground truth, what is considered to be the label. Now you use that, the, the prompt strategy. You generate prompts for each question. And then basically, um, now you test it, how accurate with respect to the ground truth, how accurate you got. That's your report. If it's 90% accurate, then you say, my prompt strategy delivers a 90% accuracy and it's better than the other strategy. Does that make sense? Nasrallah, is it? So, sorry, I was talking this whole time. I didn't thought yeah. I was muted. Sorry. Um, yeah, so also in terms of the end user product, then that's actually more of the statics part and making sure that the prompt is not biased. But and also, if I'm not mistaken, reading the documentations, uh, you guys are also asking for an end user product. So how that things also will look like, like an end user uh, okay. so, so, so you are building, you have an input to for your prompt to generate a prompt you first need to ask the person the user like so there are two users one is called the back end user right the back end person or let's say the company the company mm -hmm. is going to be having a system to ask any a, a, a client would come in their website for example and they want to generate a prompt and they have let's say a, a page that asks them what kind of prompt do you want to ask? And what's your input? Whatever, whatever. So that's the front end that you ask. That's called a requirement collection. That means input to your to your generation, automatic prompt generation part. And then you take that as an input. And then you have an algorithm that generates that given these inputs um, determines which type of uh, uh, prompt generation strategy is useful. And then after testing, whatever, it tells them, okay, use this one, use this uh, type of uh, prompt. But another way to think of it, maybe you don't give them prompts. Maybe in your, in your own uh, requirement plan, you may ask them, what kind of prompt are you planning to use? And the person puts, okay, this is the type of prompt I, 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 am, I want to use. And then you then test it and you give them with that prompt, you're not you're gonna get only accuracy of this amount right so so you can you can be you can give two systems one system is to help one system is to help them generate what is really good the other one is to analyze their prompts so it is you know you can think of that promptly whatever that company is giving two services one to allow people to generate the other for people to test their hypothesis or means their prompt strategy Oh, okay. And That's that company actually, who's doing oh. that is is being funded in millions now. That's interesting, actually, because I never thought we needed two system. Because uh, uh, the, the way I assume it was actually totally different, and the fact that you now uh, clarifying is really helpful. And okay. so, last one, and then I will give yeah. the stage to Yvonne because she's yeah. raising her hand. And is that um 
of course to data source uh, honestly like data source it's everywhere and anywhere so uh, all i want to know is like what is the best data source that oh some of examples of data source that you guys would recommend so, us I mean, to I mean the first part i mean you know you don't have to go anywhere you use you can use the challenge document that's you know that's uh, can be your data source right and how to ask questions basically that you know you are building yeah. to extra but you can use any uh, pdf or anything that we send to you or you know um but in part if you really want just uh we can also provide one like so that you can but as i said the challenge document is a very simple um part but identifying from that chunk it so that you can now say the business objective whatever there are multiple way of chunking that one you know and and all you want is like if you ask about for example what are the tasks of this week will it you know will it give you the chunks that are uh, actually related to the delivery uh, section as well and 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 uh, you know what does it give you Right. You know, you can use just that one as a simple one. And um, so let's say, let's, if you don't have any other data source you want to test it, just use the challenge document as your data source. Awesome. Uh, wonderful. Uh, just last, uh, sorry, guys. Um, okay. it, it's, it's just that. Um, Go. So it's, it's, um, let's make it faster and then it should be fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Um, yes. And how the, the last one is actually more of a technical and uh, it's just an advice if, if you really don't want to answer it then it's fine and it's just that the architecture of the applications um, according to the documentation you guys did not specify anything but you say is um, like the, the whole the, uh, you guys stated that oh you need to have some code some code parts in it so uh, but, but the only concern I have is that how the application would might look like like that's the only thing just an advice and i'm yeah. done so i think as usual you will you should you should have for now you can build a lot more of on the back end part which is basically the code that you know on a jupyter notebook or something that does uh what you want right there are functions and then later you translate that one into a backend where you pack it with either fast api or some other you know, a quart or something to translate that one into API. And then you will have a front end that does whatever you want to accomplish. For example, in this case, I told you two things. One is testing. One is testing if a user, if you ask a user to provide what they, the type of context, the type of thing that uh, Lillian, I will answer what the context is, um, what you have, and also the prompt they want to use. And you analyze one service of your system analyzes prompts uh, with a requirement the other one is only from the requirement it generates uh, a suitable prompt so that's your job right so you you deliver basically all the aspect because when you do two of them it means it takes it it's it, it does in the back end it does all of it automatic prompt generation uh, data automatic data generation and then estimating the matrices um, for you know ranking which prompt. So to, when you do that, that, basically you will be able to do these two services. You know, I, you can choose to choose one or two of them, either to analyze a prompt as well. If you want, the second system would be to actually generate prompt for them. So both of them require that you do the three components we ask, which is automatic prompt generation, automatic data generation and using ragas and similar to rank um, to rank the prompts okay awesome thank you so much guys okay. fantastic okay you um okay so i have two questions let me go the first one is i've been reading about rags evaluation and i have a question when should we trade off accuracy for recall or accuracy for precision and vice versa and also the second and to my second question um the free api key doesn't seem to be working i have tried chrome db i have tried pinecorn and i am i have tried generating a new one and i still get the billing error message so is it just me uh, so you mean you mean for the vector database 
yeah i'm trying oh, for to the vector, for the vector database you you could actually use um i mean maybe just uh, uh abel can give you can generate you know vector databases are small why don't you run it locally um, um and that yes, basically yes. is wave um, you can run locally there are open sources and we use wave it so i think maybe if abel could you just share the script that to install wave it locally locally yeah 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 like it's very simple it? it's better that one it's it's simple you don't have to i mean most of the uh, zilli you know like pine Coin or um uh, wave it have a cloud that you can for free register i've never had to have issue to uh, especially you know for pine Coin and uh, for the zilli cloud to but if you are having issue the easiest is it's not that much install just it's like like postgres or anything you can install wave it locally and and use it so i mean i mean i'm um, generating the embeddings with open ai in that case we so if it is for that one for the api we provide that key we provide that key and, and uh uh Vikrta will will share just the same as we provided okay. open ai key will give you okay a key. Yeah. okay okay thank you so if you have anything in that regard you, you should ask uh yeah okay okay thank you so please answer my first question so the first okay. one is about precision to recall right so by i think that's a very you know that you are asking the heart of the question okay it is almost always at a trade-off and it's a optimization and i would say it requires knowing the business objective what you want to do so i would say ask it in as a requirement do you want more precision or do you want more recall and again uh, it's 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 in that requirement that it should be the user's choice so i would say for now so whenever you taste the context uh you can ask them are you sure you know because you you, you don't have the user might not be giving you a context their context in full right so how do they select so do they want um so, so this system is complex right so I, i'm gonna really reduce it in principle your 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 system that the you know your company the company you're gonna establish with your with your friends will have a journey will take a person with a journey and the first journey is the retrieval component let's talk about the retrieval you will tell it like okay let's talk about the retrieval uh, how do you do your retrieval um, given your question? And the person would say, oh, I'm just going to be embedding it into this size of embedding. And the embeddings are done using OpenAI. And um, and then I then select based on similarity, right? And then, okay, you can, it's a guidance, right? You are guiding them to say, oh, um, okay, um, this one would give you basically means the person is not is not are they confident that they are retrieving the right context again Liliana would talk that context basically means for example in the challenge document so you are chunking it into let's say a paragraph everything by paragraph you are chunking the chunk strategy is different now you ask uh what are what is task you know what are the uh, relevant tasks in this week's challenge so that's the question text. And now that one is embedded and each paragraph of the challenge document is embedded. Now it will identify, you ask it to return for you three chunks. So then it will do the similarity between, uh, you know, all of the paragraphs of the challenge document and returns the most closest. Most likely it will return somewhere from the, inst the instruction section. If it returns from, like, let's say, from late submission side, you might say, oh, that's the retrieval has an issue. So there, there is, again, you know, a statistics you have to play. Is the retrieval giving you the right thing? But maybe in the automatic prompt of generation, you might, you assume this is correct, that the user has generated or has 100% accurate, whatever, you know, fix it, a fix it. Uh, retrieval uh, accuracy and you're not optimizing that so in that sense the error that's coming from there 
will plug it, you know, will be the issue, but you're not fixing. So in the prompt sense, if you are automatic prompt, you, all you, the prompt part is a lot more is about argumentation and generation. So given now the context, you assume the context is correct. And the, given a person's way of asking the question, you wanna estimate whether the prompt they have or the prompt that you will generate is gonna be a high accuracy. Accuracy means it's much more accurate with respect to the, the ground truth. Or recall, in this case, I don't think you have a recall because you don't want to have recall. Only you will, you will have a recall in this case if it's a legal document. That means you really have to provide in this way um, uh, of answer. So that means you really have to, let's say recall in this sense means the sections that it actually recalls, you can compute it to be recall. So recall normally is for, for the context part, okay? So in this case, you mostly wanna uh, agreement and uh, you know the statistics you will use will not be recalled for the prompt the automatic prompt generation but more of precision that means how much similar uh, gen you know the generated answer is how much is similar with respect to the ground truth so that, that so you you choose precision there and you would use recall mostly in selecting the context does that answer your question? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but before that, maybe let me answer for Lillian, if, if it's not already answered. So the context really means, uh, Lillian, it's the, it's the, you know, in the challenge document, if you ask now simply uh, chat GPT to say, you know, what is the current, this week's task, it doesn't have any context on your, what you are asking it about. It will just, that's called hallucination. It will hallucinate something. Oh, you know, I don't know what this week's challenge is. Uh, it's good, so it will tell you what is this week's challenge. I don't know that about that. I don't have context on that. So if you have another context, give it to me. So context is the one now, because LLM doesn't know what you're talking about. So you give it context by, for example, selecting from the challenge, the challenge document, can be the entire challenge document or a selection of the paragraphs from the challenge document can be a context. The context is basically, it's the background, you know, in a, in a in university, in high school, we have been tested, read this paragraph and answer the following question. So that paragraph or that, that text is your, con your context, right? Because then, you know, it's about the history of, um, let's say the history of, uh, a goal for the history of let's say LLM and it's asking you when was op when did OpenAI released their uh, GPT-4 now from if it is in the context you will answer it if it's not in the context you might say it's not in the context so context is basically that pre thing that you have to read or you have to see to answer the following questions does that make sense Lillian does that clarify so there's nothing about it it's the same as what we have been doing in homework read this section and you know answer okay great so it's clear for Lillian and I hope it's clear also for anyone who was not clear yeah yeah hi Abby uh, I just have one question uh do we act on the the prompt that we get or we just in, in, in principle you of course in the bank end you simulated you acted on it and estimated its confidence it's uncertain you, est you estimated it Right, so let's imagine a user gave you, like in this case, a user means the end user. Uh, you are the developer of the company. So you have two users. One is the company itself, and the other one is, usually it's called the buyer persona uh, or the, you know, the owner persona, it's basically the user persona. So the user persona is the end user. The buyer persona is normally the one who's buying for the user to, um, you know, for, for the user persona to use. So normally in software development, if you are buying, for example, a HR group might buy, uh, or like the, the sales group might, might buy, let's say Jira software, but they are not the, the end users, they are the, they are the buyer persona. So as Jira software, we'll have to think two personas. One is how do I attract sales to buy my Jira? The second one is how do I, 
design it so that the end users, the developers, actually have like my my product. So like the same, you have now two users. One is the company who want you know who give you the project, and then of course what you know the end user who is actually coming to use that service. Okay, so in 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 your case. If a user, if you ask the user, a simple interface would be, you know, what do you want the for automatic prompt generation? What's your input? You know, what kind of questions do you want to ask? What kind of answers do you want to ask? Uh, do you want to get? And what kind of context do you have? Now you take these three, and then you then in the back end you you send it to the back end. The back end simulates different types of templates, uh, prompt templates. Uh, and estimates their accuracy and then based on ragas you know based on like the accuracy in this case let's say precision and others then you say okay you know uh, this is this is if you use this type of um, prompts you know you will get a, this 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 accuracy and in the other service it would be like okay the, also you ask the user what kind of prompts do you want to use and the user gave you okay this is a type of uh, um, prompt I want to use and then you take their prompt you take their input and then generate automatically generate data simulate this thing and estimate how accurately they would get uh, you know what is their accuracy if they use that um, so basically you do profile analysis so how accurate is their strategy their prompt and you give them like if you use that you will probably only get 60 percent of the time what you want that's it. That's your answer to that. So that means you act on it uh, in the background. Does that make sense, Yaya? Yes. Yes. So yeah, yeah. It, it's it's clear. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. So I know you know if something is not clear, you guys, the ones who are, please ask it, and you guys talk as well in the Slack so that others will understand. And if something is not clear, please ping one of the tutors so that I can also come and talk to you again and if it's necessary so let's really not today there must you know you must understand everything today write down every of these are details that are missing so i am feeling that detail now hopefully and you know please share whatever understanding you have also in slack so that others can share but okay one way hi everybody can you hear me yes uh so you touched upon uh, prompt generating and prompt ranking right but I didn't hear you say anything about uh, test case generation. And the other question that I have is like, how, when we run the prompt, are we supposed to rank it against the test case that is generated or just with the rug retrieval environment ranking that we do? Uh, so, um, and um, so I mean, I mean, I'm just maybe that for the sake of, um, I don't know if you can access because sometimes, you know, whiteboards are very useful in this case so i'm just uh, um share with everyone editors now everyone allow anyone in academy to edit everyone can edit i am just sharing and you might receive the the jump board so that i think you know we are so do you receive the jump board right uh, uh, yes but access is okay, okay. Access is denied. Oh, I ask. I said everyone should be. Um, anyone with the link restrict only people now. Anyone with the link, viewer, editor. So and then copy link and that and then I am going back because I think sometimes this is useful. Okay, so if you use the this the next uh, the one I sent you will so. I think it's my writing is not going to be good, but it will. So, so the three things that we ask you um, are. So I'm just changing the color. Right. And then I am just going to be. So here is automatic. So this is one, maybe just uh, 
Okay, so I will just put that. Uh, and then the other one is data collection, and the other one is um, that's ranking. Yeah, you can improve uh, on off the text, whatever uh, you want. So now, so the three parts are the key components, right? And these key components would come um, can I draw a row? No. Um, so so this one you can have two services. One service is called The other one is okay. now. I didn't touch about uh, so this is the two services that you're gonna have. Okay, so one service send to back. Um, and the other service okay so these are two services so and now they to do that to enable uh, to do that so for both of them you might You might need to ask. Uh, let's. So you might. Uh, so. So something you are asking them to you, you you need from them like some inputs right so that means in this case you know if you don't have the whole system you you basically say like okay i want in this case example so i'm going to do the example um example uh data source in academy challenge Um, and uh, question type Um,
okay z uh, it didn't allow me so i don't know okay so so this one is i think i can change the color for this one maybe color concern so let me just do that so this is the example for this one right it's you know example is the challenge document is this one question type is that it's a qa type that that uh, they want to ask and um the desired outcome is high precision answer when the text has the information right uh, so now you will demand to, to generate your data you probably would want uh, the user to provide the challenge document so that you can generate from it automatically so when you want to do that first is you have to automatically generate evaluation data given the challenge document you get they give you that you uh, because you want to generate an evaluation because they want high precision uh, so they just didn't want something so you want to to generate um data right automatically generate ground truths from the document as well as uh, you know questions you generate questions and then you you generate as well the ground truths that you can use it as your statistics the other part is because it's a q and a format it will tell you what kind of prompts uh, strategy you want so it's basically uh, it's question what is that what is that what is that? you generate uh, a prompt that allows you to uh, you know when a user asks some question you take that question and this prompt wraps it around and gives it to LLM to answer so this is basically a template that you are you know for q and a templates you know just that you have and and then because of the two now you can for many of the data types that you generate using your type of prompt you then extract the context and send it to the LLM, uh, let's say 100 times. Now you have generated 100 uh, questions with their ground truths, and now you have a prompt, and you then test that prompt by on the data, and then you return, you get basically the answer from the LLM. Now, given in the automatic data generation, you have a ground truth, then you compare the similarity, again, maybe in this case using, um, uh, you, you know, Ragas will do most of this for you, and then you then accurately say like, okay, you then rank using the prompt ranking based on the, the matrix that you want, then you return, here is the prompt for the service of prompt generation, you say, here is the prompt you can use. For the prompt analysis service, then you use it their prompt, and therefore you give them like, okay, the score of your prompt is 10%, okay? So that means all of the three, the automatic prompt generation, automatic data generation, and prompt ranking are the, the in the background what you do to provide service, one of the service, prompt generation or prompt analysis. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. So the test case generation is something that happens in the back end. Was that, was that visible? Not to... like, I mean, I, I'm not sure yeah, if that was. was visible. I didn't, I didn't share my screen. So I was, so this is what I draw for everyone who was not on that thing. Okay. Uh, right. so, uh, so what you're saying is the test cases are not supposed to be you know uh, a product or some a service that the system provides but something that works in the background to provide this to services right from oh. generation and from why, why, why don't why don't we add another one another service um Test case. Yeah. So this can be another service if you want. So you choose. So yeah, in principle, you know, you can choose. So but yeah, in the but it definitely because in the back end you are you are using it to do one of them one of the systems so yeah it, this one is maybe it's here so let me group it mm 
Okay. So maybe just it's a, a service that accompanies both. Yeah. But you can you can give it also as a service. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So we might think of it as a, not a service at itself, but yeah, it, both of yeah. them can use it to you know to create their yeah. own response. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. True. So in a way, if you want, you can create a page for it so that people can generate. But in principle, yeah, like this is what Ragas also do. Um, so yeah, you can, these ones are your service. So then if we write, these are... Um, I was thinking in a way that like, if we're, let's assume we're testing the, ranking the prompt. So when I output the rank, I'll say, I will install these test cases to run the prompt so that I can show it in a list format or something. Yeah. Instead of it being the byproduct. So these are components. So this label is called components. So if we now have. Unfilled. I don't want it to be filled. Ah, feeling. No feeling. Okay. Transparent. Okay. So this and this part I can relate. I think I can erase. So this part is the so this is the component part. And this one is the service part. So okay, so yeah, so you have yeah this ones whenever we we wrote before so this area is you know like what we highlighted in the challenge document are the components and these are the the services that we can provide as a company does that so does that answer the question yes very well wonderful okay so today you thought you, uh, you thought we should fulfill the parameters such as complete the project, demonstrate and understand the content X platform. And uh, Aaron, uh, I went in the challenge document. You mentioned the right in the overview. Of, yeah, I think what is I don't know what is in the complete the project and demonstrate and understanding of the project. I think that if something is wrong, we will fix. But it's just about for this week. I mean the challenge like so. The, if you are referring the rubric, the rubric is actually to try to help you what interim reports for at interim report, we want to evaluate two things. One is, have you understood the project? And, you know, in this case, understanding the project means task one. Uh, you know, do you understand? You read the resources, you ask it any question, and you are very clear um, with, with respect to, like, the project. And then not only you are clear, you have started programming some things, you know, writing course and stuff. But that is much more to, you know, do you have the GitHub account there, you know, the repository ready and stuff. Not to complete anything, but the task one, the review of your task one will really help you. That's what we think you, if you understand the project, then you have reviewed everything and you can write that one. So Aaron does that answer. It's, it's really what is in the challenge document. It is that you review, you write your report on Task one, that means review everything, your understanding, you, you nail it such that you have a clear understanding of what is needed. Okay. 
and and then also you have the the repository ready and you know you are starting to code that means we want by the interim report we want actually people to to be ready to finish on saturday so you know we don't expect anything more but much more that you are you ready to, to finish on on saturday that's what we want to see so that means you have things you know um, set up already uh, in the code sense does that make sense Aaron? i hope that is and if it's not you can ask yeah okay great is automatic data generation service the same as automatic test case yes the test case is really i mean i will edit it i think it seems to confuse most, most people a case in this case is just data test case i'm just going to edit it right now uh, automatic data valid evaluation data so i'm going to replace it test case with so whenever you see test case um i, I um, um edit. Oops, um find and replace i don't know where it is find and replace okay so test case i would want to replace it with uh data next so Previous, I don't understand how. Google is really annoying that it I can't move this screen. Okay, then let it. Okay. Replace So I have replaced everything, so you don't have to get confused after this. Okay. Hopefully, it makes sense if you get, uh, you know, so that I hope that then makes it clear. Okay, Rudolph, that then it's clear. Okay. Any question? Is everyone now clearer, uh, Rudolph? Yeah. Uh, in the sheet, you you replace the test case by evaluation data generation so uh, when we were talking about evaluation i often related to the part of the ranking where you test in your rank yeah so um, basically whatever you are going to evaluate it's basically you for that evaluation you need data and so it's yes. data generated. okay yeah yeah and uh, I think Abdul Hamid, yeah, that is mostly the case. And they also got
got inspired from, yeah, I think that's uh, promptly generated is exactly the case. And they were inspired by another one called prompt engineering, GPT prompt engineering. They did the hard work of some of the idea coming up and then these people, a Brazilian company then uh, made it. And I think that the nice thing about it is because it's a neat and uh, knowing that will help you a lot. Everybody's requiring that now when they go away from, you know, just getting nice things to really productive uh, business value out of it. You need to understand the very different pieces of it and uh, analyzing, you know, analyzing your your prompts and identifying gaps and uh, estimating uncertainties is, is important. So if you look at the task one, some of the things we share, it's there as well. The their GitHub code and stuff is there as well, so you can you can see it. But I think this will give you, you know, you start this week and then you are on top of, you know, being precise. So I think this will help you as we progress in the future. I think this will help you really. This is the like the backbone of uh, many, you know, that the misunderstanding and the confusion now. It's okay. Try to nail it. Um, and you would really, most of people then would want you, you know, then you would be really robust in that. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, I think so. Uh, with Abdul Hamid, I think you, you probably got it. Yeah, exactly. So, so you can get inspired from them. Okay, are prompt engineering getting replaced already? Uh, it's, you know, prompt engineering, as I said, it's really like sales. You cannot replace it. But anyone who's just only trying to craft a perfect prompt will be replaced. But anyone who understands what a prompt is, it's like sales getting the most, uh, you know, the best out of the LLMs out there, then you will not, they are not replaced. And you are becoming both, you know, the prompt engineer as well as um, giving service. So I hope that makes sense. Wonderful. Okay. So I think, yeah, please help each other to understand because, you know, task one would give you and, you know, having a clarity today will help you. The, the task might not be as difficult as you think. But understanding it is difficult, and then working in you know working with da vector database, working with this, working with that, you know, it would really help you understand the complexities. Even if the task might itself, itself might not be that complex, but you know, getting something right is a precision is always the difficult thing in the world. So, you know, doing something, eighty percent of the work usually takes twenty percent of the time. And the last 20% of the work sometimes take 80% of the time. And that's actually, I am being fair. Most of the time, what it is said is that 1%, the 99% the of the work usually takes 1% of the time. The last 1% of the work takes actually 99% 99, 99 of the time. And usually that's because precision is the evil. And it's basically the, the, the hard part of it. So, but having this in your portfolio that you have worked and you have understood the intricacies will give you a lot of advantage. Okay, wonderful. Awesome, thanks guys. I think we can stop recording. I hope it's clear.